Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to Bits of Architecture. So in this series, we're going to be learning about computer architecture, starting from the very basics. Now, the first question that people often have is, of course, what is computer architecture? And what do we mean when we say architecture? So architecture is how we describe the operation and organization of hardware components. Now, when we say hardware components, we're not typically talking about things like gates and transistors. We're more talking about high level hardware structures. So things like caches and reorder buffers. And we care about how these things operate, how they connect together and how we interact with them through our instructions. Now, at the end of the day, architecture is really just another layer of abstraction in our many layers of abstraction that we have in computing systems. Now, in particular, architecture is you know, roughly in the middle of these layers of abstraction. So at a high level, we have things like our high level software. So this will be you know, the code we write in Python or C++. And we write this code without having to think too much about how it's going to run on the underlying hardware, though it's often useful to do so for the sake of performance. Now, below our high level software is our system software. And this software has to be much more in tune with uh, how our hardware operates. And the reason for this is because our system software includes things like compilers that we use to generate the instructions that we're going to execute you know, for our high level software. And also things like operating systems that we rely on for managing our hardware resource, uh, resources and abstracting these things away from high level software. Now, below our system software, it's going to be our architecture. Now, our architecture provides this model of hardware that's going to be used by our system software. And it's also provided the blueprints of you know, what we're going to implement at the lower levels of abstraction, right? So how will our hardware structures be implemented in terms of gates and registers? And then how eventually will it get turned into an actual chip? So how will, we, how will our you know, architecture wind up you know, eventually when it gets to silicon? Now, because architecture is in the middle of these layers of abstraction, it requires us to look you know, both at the higher and lower levels. And a good question, of course, is why, right? So why do we care about these other layers of abstraction? Why can't we just focus on, say, architecture? And it has a pretty simple answer. And that answer is that the other layers influence how we design our architectures. So why do we care about, say, higher level software layers? Well. At the end of the day, we're designing our architectures and our computers to run software. And we make different decisions about our architecture based on the software that's going to run. So if I'm designing an architecture for a machine learning workload, the decisions I'm going to make are very different than if I'm designing something for a high frequency trading application, right? These are different workloads with different requirements. Another reason why we care about high level software is because our hardware at the end of the day has to be programmable, right? So we can implement all sorts of you know, new and exciting things in our hardware, but if it's difficult for software to make use of, it can be you know, very difficult for um, our hardware to be adopted. So you know, people need to be able to write tools and write compilers for the hardware that we're designing. Now, why do we care about, you know, say the lower levels of abstraction, right, by comparison? Well, at the end of the day, Someone needs to be able to implement our architecture. And our hardware often has limitations. So we often have a limited uh, area that we're working with um, for our chips, and we have a certain power envelope, right? So we have all of these different trade-offs, right? Of programmability, of power, and of area. And these all you know, influence you know, how our final architecture or our design is going to look. Now, what exactly goes into our architecture. So we can break up our architecture into you know, two parts. We can break it up into our instruction set architecture, uh, often referred to as our ISA or ISA. And on the other side, we can have our microarchitecture, uh, sometimes referred to as our UARCH or MUARCH, right? For MU being the Greek letter uh, often used to abbreviate micro. Now, our ISA, right, our instruction set architecture, this is the interface that we're going to provide to software, right? It's going to be all the instructions that our processor has, as well as things like registers and how our hardware operates. 
So there's many examples of this. So you can look up, say, the x86 ISA, RISC-V, ARM, and MIPS. Now, by comparison, our microarchitecture, or UARCH, is the detailed hardware design. So it's our concrete implementation of our instruction set architecture. So our instruction set architecture says what our hardware is going to do, and our microarchitecture is the concrete implementation of that instruction set architecture. And it may have some differences under the hood, right? So there may be more optimizations inside our, our microarchitecture that don't have to be, you know, put into our instruction set architecture that we expose to programmers. They can just be things we've designed and are in our hardware um, under the hood. Now, so far, we've been mainly talking about architecture. What about the computer part of computer architecture? So what kind of computer systems do we design for? And there are a few classes of computers that are important to think about. So there are things like personal computers. This includes, you know, our desktops and our laptops. There are things like servers, which exist in data centers and as part of supercomputers. We, of course, have our embedded computers, which are, you know, everywhere today, in our cars and our TVs. And then, of course, we have our personal mobile devices, so things like our phones and our tablets. Now, between each of these classes of computers, we make very different decisions about our architectures and our designs. So, for example, our, our personal computers often have to be decently powerful and good at, you know, a number of different things, right? A number of different applications that we're going to run on them. But for something like an embedded computer, it might only have a singular purpose. It might only have one application that's going to run. And then likewise, we have very different, you know, criteria between our servers and personal mobile devices. Our servers tend to live inside of supercomputers and inside of giant warehouse scale computers, right? Where we have tons of power and cooling, but by comparison, you know, a personal mobile device um, fits in a pocket, right, and runs off of a battery, right. So very different design decisions. Now it looks like we've a, we were able to place everything into these nice, neat boxes that we can compare, but even within these individual boxes, so even within personal computers, there's quite a spectrum of architecture decisions that we can make and that we indeed have to make. So, for example. We design desktops very differently than laptops, right? You know, desktops tend to be more powerful and laptops have to be portable and run off of a battery. Um, you know, with our servers that we're designing, right? Are we designing these servers for, you know, very broad tasks, right? Or are we designing it as part of, you know, some specialized supercomputer for a particular task? And the same is true for things like personal mobile devices, right? So, you know, you know, how I design for a tablet is going to be very different than how I design for something like smart glasses, right? And for things like embedded computers, you know, how I design something for a TV um, is going to be very different than how I design some embedded computer that's going to be on some satellite. So even within these categories, there's plenty of architecture decisions that we can make. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this first video of this Bits of Architecture series. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.